Right now, I'm in the middle of launching my updated training called Authentic Course Launches, which is about helping students to create and launch their own online course. And I want to just give you an overview of the five key pieces to think about as you start thinking about creating and launching your own online courses. Because I came to this realization that a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to create an online course. So the main decision I have to make is which tech platform should I use to deliver my courses? Is it going to be Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi, Member Vault, Learn Dash, Mighty Networks, or something else? There's lots of them cropping up uh, every year. There's at least one or two or five or 10 more course delivery platforms. And let me just give you my experience of this. First of all, I have been creating and launching online courses since 2009, okay? So, and all those years I have launched at least 30 different online courses. I've actually lost count. And uh, just to give you a sense of uh, my activity with this, just even from 2017 through the, the most of 2021, I have launched approximately one course per month. Okay, so uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So about for about five years, just the last five years, I've been launching about one course per month. Some of them are new topics. Some of them are ones I've taught before. So I have a lot of experience in launching online courses. And let me tell you, Deciding on the course delivery platform is not the major factor for whether or not your course business succeeds. So what are the factors? Let me go ahead and share what I think, what I think they are. Uh, well, I'll just go ahead and go into the five uh, major pieces that I promised you just to save time here. Um, the first major piece to think about is how do your online courses fit in to your overall business model. I'm gonna show you something on the screen and those of you who uh, are listening to this later and can't watch the screen, don't worry. You can click on the link in the uh, podcast episode to be, able to, um, to be able to see this. But it's basically my business model um, you know, uh, blog post that, that many of you have seen before, but let me go ahead and share it on the screen right now. There it is. My simple model for authentic businesses, concentric circle. This is what I recommend that you think about before you start you know, launching courses on a regular basis. Do you understand that your online courses probably shouldn't be the only thing you offer? And the reason is because a lot of you are thinking, I got to provide deep transformation when people take my courses. And I think that's giving yourself way too much pressure. And it's also giving your students too much pressure. You see what I mean? Because if online course is the only thing you offer, how can you expect to pr provide deep transformation? That kind of stuff, deep transformation typically happens with one-on-one -on -one work because you can customize your advice and your facilitation and your presence for the person in front of you, depending on what their situation is. That's how deep transformation it's much more likely to occur. Otherwise, it might happen in group programs where you meet with a group, could be a small group or a larger group on a regular basis uh, for months, if not a whole year. There, some transformation is more likely to happen versus your online courses should be really thought of as knowledge delivery in a very structured way, for sure. And there might be some facilitated exercises during that, that experience and you might facilitate that students get together with each other, but it should not be expected that you provide the kind of deep transformation. You shouldn't expect that of yourself compared to your group programs and to your one-on-one -on -one clients. Just like you wouldn't expect someone to buy your book and you, you say, well, every reader of my book must be deeply transformed. That's probably providing too much pressure for the reader too. Some readers, right? Just like online course students, a lot of them just buy the course because they just want to watch it while they're having dinner. You're not expect them to drop everything they're doing and they must provide the exercise. Otherwise, they cannot go to the next module. That's, 
that's not how online courses are typically expected to be. So that's the first point is understand your strategy. Where does your online course fit in the overall business model? And therefore, you can price your online course more thoughtfully as a result. Okay, the next major piece to think about is, let me go ahead and go to my notes here. The next major piece is how do you choose topics and how do you pre-sell the course? Because the choosing of your course topics will determine whether or not students will sign up for it. Yeah, it's not... <laughs> It's not only how beautiful you are, okay? It's not only how charismatic you are. Even some of your best friends might not sign up, are not likely to sign up for your online course if it's not a topic that they want to engage with. It's not that they don't love you. It's just that the topic isn't something that's interesting to them. You see what I mean? So, so many people, I, I see this and it breaks my heart. They work so hard on creating this fabulous online course, in their opinion, it's fabulous. They may have worked months on it, maybe even more than a year on it. And then they come to someone like me, a marketing person says, George, now I've created, I've spent a whole year creating an online course. Now you got to help me sell it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish you came to me a year ago because you've put the cart before the horse. Before you even create the first module of an online course, you need to have worked with your audience on deciding the topic, right? It's because I've said this in my other videos and I'll reiterate this. Authentic marketing is essentially about, the one, one major way of thinking of authentic marketing is that it is always a collaboration with the audience. I always like that quote from Frederick Buchner that you're calling, what is your calling? Your calling is where your great gifts, you know, the talents, your passion, where your gifts meets the world's deep hunger. That intersection between your gifts and the world's deep hunger is your calling. The same thing with your courses. Your course success, the success of your courses is that intersection between what you would love to teach and what the world wants to, to sign up for from you. So how can you create a course without first doing market research and find out what the world wants to buy from you? You're putting the cart before the horse and you're also, it's kind of like another analogy is like authentic marketing is like building friendships at scale. That's what authentic marketing is, building friendships at scale. And friendship, a friendship is basically, imagine you want to go to a movie and you say, I don't care what my friends like. I want my friends to go, to go to the movie with me, but I don't care what my friends like. I'm going to decide on the movie. I'm going to decide on the time in the movie, uh, the genre, the, which movie we're going to go to, and I'm just going to make my friends go with me. Your friends are going to be like, I, uh, yeah, we don't. So a lot of some of them, you know, one of them might, might say, all right, let's go. I can do it at that time. I, can, I like that top. I like those actors. I like that, that uh, genre. But some of your friends are like, yeah, I don't like that genre. I wish you would have asked us first so that we could decide together what movie we can go to, right? You want to have fun with your friends. Same thing with the online course. You want to have fun with your students. You want them to sign up. So you need to decide with your audience. You say, I don't have an audience, George. You're, of course you have an audience. Everyone has an audience. You start with your friends, your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn connections, Wherever you connect, you probably have maybe some past clients, some potential clients, people who might become clients. You, everybody has an audience. It starts with your friends, people you know, your colleagues, et cetera. You start there and then you branch out from there. But you decide with your audience, whatever they are in the beginning, what topics you should, should you give. You should write out three topics and then post it on Facebook and say, which of these three topics should I teach? Which of these three topics most interest you? So, so the course decision market research process is an incredibly important process. So when I'm going to, in my, in my training about authentic course launches, that is an important module for market research. So anyway, so that's the second major area. The first major area was deciding your course, your courses in the context of your business model. The second major area is learning how to do market research and choosing the course topics and when, you, when you're doing market research, that's part of the pre-selling process. 
a course launch isn't like I said, is it you create it in your in your in your closet, you, you work so hard on it and you make everyone buy it. It doesn't work like that. All along the way, you're collaborating with your audience on, hey, is this topic good? Oh, hey, what about this title? Hey, now that we've chosen the title, what do you think about these five topics that you cover in the course? Or is there something else? You're working with your audience the whole time. So by the time it's ready for them to buy it, they've been working with you the whole time. That's the pre-selling process. So that's the second major thing, okay? The third major thing is that you need to have a marketing checklist. Now that you are ready to sell it, I mean, now that you've decided on topics, title, subtopics, and now you've chosen the price, everything, that's part of what I train people at, how to choose the price. But once you have chosen all that, now you're ready to actually announce it to say, all right, I'm so excited. Here's the page where you can sign up for the course. You need a marketing checklist. Where are you going to announce? Every time you have a course to launch, where do you announce it? Do you, are you going to send emails to whom? Do you, do you have an email list? Do you, how many emails are you going to send? So that's that whole process of a marketing checklist is very important because then you reduce the stress of launches over the months and the years of you launching. Okay. So I like to launch my courses in a very light and gentle way. You, you've seen me do it probably. If you follow me on social media, you've seen me launch my courses. It's a light and gentle thing. I don't give myself a lot of pressure. I don't give you, the audience, a lot of pressure. It's like, hey, you want to sign up? And it works well, well because I keep learning from every launch and students get used to my launches and they sign up on a regular basis. And I have plenty of students sign up over time because I have a rhythm. I have a rhythm that my audience has gotten used to. That's why a course marketing checklist is so important. So start one today. If you're interested in creating a course, start your checklist for how you, how you do all this. Um, the fourth major area is actually creating the course content. So it's, 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 having, it's learning and improving on how do you actually create the content? How do you go from the topics that you have gotten your audience to vote on to what are the exercises you're gonna have them do in, in your course, to what are the major um, misconceptions you're gonna clarify on around this topic, to what's the homework gonna give them, to are you going to allow them to connect with each other? What's the, you have a course directory. So course content is, um, involves all of that. You know, theory, exercises, homework, uh, course uh, directory, perhaps student directory. Um, and the momentum of how you're going to do all this and how you're going to separate them into various sessions, right? So creating the course content, you should have a checklist for yourself on how you take a topic and turn it into course content. So just over time, you'll keep getting better as you have a checklist for yourself on that process. And finally, the fifth major area is the tech platform and the registration process. So this is where what people think, oh, creating online courses is all about the platform, the technology of it. No, that's just one of five areas. But it is an area. It's something you need to think about. So are you going to use Thinkific or Kajabi or Member Vault or LearnDash? These are all well-known and very popular platforms. In my training on launching courses, I don't teach you any of these platforms because I have my own that I've created that I've patched together over time that I really like. Of course, I'm going to teach you my way of doing it. I use, a, uh, I'm not going to teach you Thinkific or Kajabi, or I'm not even, I'm not going to teach you how to choose among these platforms because that decision, oh my gosh. Well, I, I will give you a blog post where I did some research on what my audience recommended and the, the popular ones were Thinkific, Kajabi, and Member Vault. Learn Dash was also popular, but like, people are so passionate about the platform they're choosing. So I'm not going to even go in that. Well, I'm going to show you how I do it. I, I, I connect YouTube unlisted videos with my mailing list software with, with PayPal, and I stitch them all together using, using Zapier. I like this method better because it's more flexible. It's automated. It's streamlined. People can buy the stuff afterwards. I don't have to even think about it. It's all streamlined. So that's my preference. I'm going to show it to you in my, in my training if you decide to join me. But anyway, these are the five areas. I hope this helps you to get a sense of ah, what's all involved before you start going into uh, creating and launching your online courses. But really, the, the last key I'll, I'll share with you is you need a rhythm of doing this. You can't just be expecting that your first launch is going to be the biggest launch. It's going to be so successful. 
you are, you are robbing yourself of the learning process that needs to happen with every launch that you do. You need to take notes and figure out, hmm, I'm going to do this a little differently next time. And if you have a rhythm, so for example, launching a course every three months or every six months, or like me, once a month, I've learned so much over the last five years of launching once a month. Now I can teach this stuff, of course. That, and I've, even before five years, I was launching a lot, uh, at least four times a year before that. So anyway, um, if you're interested, you can take my training on how to create and launch online courses. Otherwise, these are the five areas I recommend that you think through for, with yourself, for yourself and create checklists for. I hope this helps and look for, looking forward to your comments and questions below. If, with any questions, I, I'll be able to answer briefly. But if you want to go in depth into all this, I have a whole training on, on this stuff. So if you're interested. All right. Anyway, either way, I wish you well. I wish you joyful productivity in your process of creating and launching courses. Take care.